it's tip time. And today we are going to talk about another concept from Lightning Web Components open source called routing. Routing is a concept that allows us to make sure single page applications behave like traditional web applications when it comes to navigation. So things like the URL should always indicate what the user is currently viewing. The browser back and forward button should work and the user can directly navigate to a view with an appropriate URL, which is called deep linking. A typical example for this is Salesforce. It is a single page application, but the browser back and forward buttons work and using a record URL, you can directly go to the record view. So let's see how to implement routing. First, let's take a look at an app that I have built. I have a homepage and then I click on the products link and it shows me a list of products. After which I can click on a product and go to the product detail page. Notice the URL is still localhost 3001. It is because this is a single page application. So there is one index.html file which embeds the app component. And inside the app component, I've used Boolean variables to hide and show different views. So right now, from the product detail page, if I click on back, I don't go to products list. I directly exit the app and go to a blank page. This is where routing helps. Let's see how we can implement that. First, let's clean up all of these conditional statements so that we just have the components that we created. Next, we will be using a module called LWCE router, which is built by our engineering team. And a fun fact about it, it's also built using Lightning Web Components. So let's import this router components using the npm install command. Once the installation is successful, we are going to add this to LWC config JSON for module resolution. Next, we must add the LWCE router component to our code. This is the primary component that must wrap all the components that need routing to be applied. Now in our case, all of our components need routing. So we'll put all of our code inside this tank. Next, we need to define the routes for which we are going to use the LWCE root component. It takes in an attribute called path, which can be a URL or a regular expression. It also takes in the exact attribute that denotes whether or not the URL has to be exactly matched. Now, other than the home page, I created a route for the product list component and the product detail component. And the URL for product detail component is dynamic. And you can make a URL dynamic by using the colon symbol. This allows you to create unique URLs for each of your products. Very similar to how Salesforce works. The next step, of course, is to access these dynamic values in our components. So we go to the component in which we need to access these dynamic values from the URL. Here it is the product detail component. And what we do first is import the root parameters wire adapter and then wire it. We can then access the dynamic values from the URL from the params property. So here I'm going to use the product ID from the params property. Finally, we replace the standard anchor tags with the LWC link component so that whenever you click on this link, this component makes sure it adds a new entry to the browser history so that the back and forward buttons work. With this, most of our work is done, but not completely. There are two more steps that we have to perform. First, make sure you're using synthetic shadow. Second, you need to update the public path for build from dot slash to slash, for which we are going to create a new webpack config file and then use this configuration in our build commands. Now let's build our project and see it in action. So here I am in the home page and now I click the product list component. Notice the URL changes. Now I click on a product and notice the URL changes again. Now, if I click the back button, I go to the product list. In a new tab, let me open the detail page directly. And you can see it shows me the exact product that I'm looking for. So this is how you implement routing. Hope this tip was helpful. 
and in case you have any topics in mind around which you would like some tips on please let us know and we are more than happy to deliver it for you Hello again and it's tip time. Today I'm going to show you how you can write the scripts in SFDX. Scripts can combine a number of CLI commands into a single click execution. One of the common use cases can be automation of the installation process. Let's see how it works. Here I am in VS Code where I have created a sample LWC project. It has a simple hello component. Let's start by creating an install script file. You can create it in the scripts folder. I prefer creating it in a bin folder as it is going to be an executable file. Let's name it install.sh. If you are using Windows, you may create a .ps or a .batch file. Let's now list down the steps that we want to automate. We'll first delete any existing scratch org with the same name. Then we can create a scratch org. We can push the source code. Finally, we want to navigate to a specific page in the browser. Okay, let's now add the commands. We can use a strategy here. Run the command in command palette and copy the command from the output panel. Let's start with delete from the output panel. Let's copy and paste the command to the script. We can also add the alias name of our scratch org to it. Similarly, we'll add the command for default scratch org creation. Let's add the command for pushing the source. Now we'll open the browser by clicking this button and open the sales homepage. Let's go back to VS code and check the output panel and copy the command from there. Now I also want to automate navigate to the page so I can use P option here for navigation URL path and copy the page location from the browser. Let's now save the file and our script file is ready. We can now test it. But one second, if you are using Mac or Linux, we may have to make this an executable file. Let's go to the terminal tab and run this file. I can actually drag and drop it to the terminal. You can see that it deletes the scratch org, creates a new scratch org, pushes the code and finally navigates to the respective page in the browser. You can now commit this code to GitHub so that others can easily install your application. You can actually write more complex script which can add the permission set and data as well. You can check any of the sample apps from the sample gallery. Let's check the LWC recipes app. I've already opened the code in another VS Code instance. Let's open the install scratch script and examine. It has a sequence of commands to delete the scratch org, create the scratch org, push the source, assign permission set, import sample data, and finally open the org. You can also notice that it is going to navigate to the hello component. Okay, let's now see how easily we can deploy the sample app and start working on it using this script. Here you can see the magic. It runs all the steps and navigates to the hello component page. Please let us know if you like the tip and also let us know if you want a specific tip. We'll be more than happy to do it. Thank you.